Hey y'all, it's Kelly from Dixie Darlings Tumblers here. And today I've got something that's a little bit different than anything y'all have ever seen me do. Actually, it's a lot different than anything y'all have ever seen me do. There's no vinyl, there's no leopard spots. So I have received Countercultures Culture Sculpt, which is their two-part sculpting epoxy. And basically it just sat on the shelf, y'all. I was really intimidated to try it. There are some of y'all that make some beautiful 3D tumblers out there. And I basically was just intimidated by the process. So I knew it was gonna take something that really grabbed my attention for me to try this, but I kept looking. And y'all, I pull inspiration from all over the place. And this week is actually gonna come from a cake. So I had spotted this cake with this girl on it. And she had this long dark hair and this beautiful red flowy dress. And y'all, I love a good red dress. I have ever since I was a little girl, something about red is just my color, I love it. So I knew once I spotted this, that's what I wanted to try to recreate on a tumbler. I hope that you guys enjoy it. I am love how this turned out. It turned out just like I imagined it in my mind. Um, and it was so much more user friendly, this product was than I expected. So y'all, if I can do it, you can do it. So don't be afraid to try. Please ask any questions for me. I'll be glad to help any way I can. I will list all the products that I use in the description box below, as well as some discount codes. So make sure you check those out. Make sure you subscribe and hit the little bell so you don't miss my future tutorials. Thank y'all for watching and I hope you enjoy it. So we're actually going to start today with how I decided to represent the girl as she was on the cake on the tumbler. So it's, it's with an acrylic blank. So this is just a file I bought on Etsy and I sent it to April at the Vinyl Cottage and she was able to print the acrylic blank for me on her 3D printer. She will have these available on her website and I'll link that in the description box below. And I'm just going to rough it up here. I'm taking my sanding block and just kind of roughing the surface and then I'm going to take some rubbing alcohol and wipe that off. And I've just taped her down to this board so she won't slip around while I'm trying trying to apply the glitter and uh, the epoxy here. So I'm just gonna do a thin layer on both sides of her with epoxy and a little bit of glitter. And I'm gonna use Peachy Olive Glitter's Basic Blackboard and Caviar. I wanted the Basic Blackboard because it was a thinner, but I wanted a little bit of holographic shine to her, so I decided to throw the Caviar in there. These are two, two of my favorite blacks um, from Peachy Olive Glitter. So just because she's a smaller character, <laughs> um, I decided that I, I probably wanted a, I didn't want a chunky glitter in there, so, but I just wanted a little bit of holographic sparkle too. So I did add the caviar. And she actually is printed off in five inches. So April and I went back and forth. We tried three, we tried four, and then finally we ended up deciding on five because I did want her to have a pretty true representation on the cup like it was on the cake. And so the, just the sizing wise, I decided that the five inch was the best size for me to go with on her. And I've mixed up more epoxy I need here. I wasn't really sure just because of the size of her, how much I was gonna need. So I ended up having a little bit more and pouring the extra in a mold. I mean, you probably could have gotten away with five milliliters. I think here I've mixed up 15 and I knew that I would have extra. So I did have a mold handy just to kind of pour it in once I was done. And then I'm just gonna take one of these small silicone tools that I have. And I think they're actually clay sculpting tools, but they have the silicone tip on them. So I like to use these when I'm applying epoxy to my acrylic blanks. So I'm just gonna apply a little bit of time and I'm gonna spread it out. I don't want this to be too thick. I don't want it running off the sides. I basically just wanna cover her where she has just a thin layer of this black glittered epoxy on top of her. And you can see it really does not take very much. I just kind of dip off a little bit on the end of the tool and apply it on there. Sometimes I'll add just a little bit more and then just kind of spread it out, but I definitely want it to be a thin coat, so it does not take very much. So after I've covered her pretty well with epoxy, I'm gonna go back in and where those little corners are, like where her heel is and her knee meets, I go back in with a toothpick and just kind of pull those areas out because that'll get in between there pretty good to make sure that it's not running down in there. I want it to be pretty close right as the acrylic blank is. And then I'm gonna let that coat dry for about six hours and then I'm gonna peel the backing off and I'm gonna do the exact same thing on the other side.
So I'm just gonna mix back in my basic black board and my caviar, just like I did before. I've got a little bit less epoxy this time, just because I know about how much it's gonna take this time. So I'm just gonna do the exact same thing. I'm gonna stir this glitter into the epoxy, and then I'm gonna cover her just like I did before and use my little toothpick to get all the little crevices out to make sure there's no epoxy dripping down and in the little bins of the acrylic blank. And for this design, I decided to go with the True 22 from the Steel Magnolia. I thought that this design would just flow fairly seamless on this style cup. And I've basically just sanded the cup and then I've spray painted with Rust-Oleum 2X white. And now I'm gonna apply some glitter to the cup and I'm just gonna use a little bit of epoxy here. I've got basically got less than five milliliters. I just want a very thin coat to apply a little bit of glitter here. And since I am using a white glitter here, I wanna make sure that I use very little epoxy because I don't want it to streak. Cause white does tend to show the streaks the worst um, that I have found when you're, using, when you're using the epoxy method to apply glitter. So I'm definitely trying to spread it out as evenly and pretty thin as I can here to make sure it's not gonna streak on me. And then I end up letting that sit for about five minutes. And then I'm gonna go in with Peachy Olive Glitter's Hedwig. So this is a beautiful, it's a basic white. So I didn't want any holographic. I didn't really want any color in here because I wanted the focus to be on the red dress for sure. So I wanted to provide a pretty basic base, but I did want glitter on the cup instead of just the spray paint. Then I'm just making sure I have really good coverage over this. And then I'm just gonna tap off any excess and I'm gonna let this coat dry for about six hours before I go into my first layer of epoxy over the glitter. And so after I've let the glitter dry for about six hours and I did use Counterculture's medium viscosity for my epoxy method applying the glitter and now I'm going back in with a coat over the glitter of Counterculture's medium viscosity artist resin. I'm using about 25 milliliters I'm gonna apply this. I'm gonna use my torch to pop any bubbles. I let this coat dry for about four to six hours and I do go in with a second coat before I go in to add the girl and start adding the culture sculpt to the cup. I did want it smooth. I knew I was gonna go in and add epoxy over once I got the, the dress applied, but I did want it smooth before I even started that process. So I do use two coats of epoxy after the epoxy method. Both of them are about 25 milliliters of Counterculture's Artist Resin. Then after those two coats have dried, about eight hours, I am gonna go in and apply my little girl here. And I decided that I tried several different ways and I just, I thought about it and I just decided that hot glue was probably the easiest way and was gonna be the most effective. So I did sand the cup here a little bit and then I'm just applying hot glue here. It's just a cheap little Walmart hot glue gun. And I'm just applying it to that one leg that's gonna be right on the cup. And then I'm just gonna place her on the cup. I want her about, about at her waist so when I start building the skirt around her, that's where it starts, and that's the part that's gonna be on the cup. So I am using Encounter Culture's Poxy Sculpt, also known as Culture Sculpt. It's been called both, they changed the name, so if, you call it, if it, you've heard it called one or the other, it's still the same thing. And I did learn that, you can see up at the top corner here, I mixed up way too much to start with. So I did learn that doing these smaller balls here was much easier because it takes a little while to do this process. So I just had to mix up a little bit at a time because if not, it'll get kind of sticky, start sticking to your gloves and harden pretty quick. And so I just mix up a little bit. It does take one to two minutes to mix it up before I start kind of rolling it out and patting it down to spread it out where it's the little layers that I'm gonna use for the skirt. So you just want to make sure this is good and mixed up and you can kind of tell they're a little bit different coloration So you can tell when it's mixed pretty well um, And it, it, the texture of one versus the other is a little bit different So you can kind of feel when it's mixed pretty good So I just usually I tried to can't you know like set my timer for one to two minutes But then after you do it a couple of times you can kind of get a feel for how long you need to mix it Thank you. 
And so I kind of already started applying the skirt with the first one before it got too hard, but it got hard. It, well, it took me a little while. I wasn't sure exactly how I was going to do it. So I basically just roll this out, kind of you would look like a little rolling pin, and then I just take my fingers and I flatten it out. So I want there to be a flat layer, and basically it's about a half inch thick. It's kind of what I decided was the right width on it. So you can kind of see it curves around pretty naturally, but I'm just gonna do this in little pieces. So y'all, y'all know I will not tell y'all a lie. This is a process. So you can't do very much at a time, or if you can, you're better than me. I had to just do little bits at a time. So I would just take off, just pinch off a little bit, a little bit more than like the size of your thumb, basically. I just kind of pinch that off. I'd roll it out and kind of have a thin little, you know, rolling pin looking thing. And then I would just take my fingers and I just kind of pat it down until it was flat and it was pretty thin. So I wanted this to be pretty thin so it would mimic, you know, just kind of the natural flow of the skirt. So I'm basically just gonna keep doing that until I get her dress done. So I really didn't have a rhyme or reason here. There's no perfect way to tell you how to do it really. I just kind of made it flow. And I don't think you can really go wrong on this. The dress just kind of has this naturally crazy curvy flow. And so I just tried to mimic that and make it look as close to the dress. And then I wanted to have this big long train that's gonna wrap around the cup. So I'm basically just gonna let you guys kind of watch here. I do use my silicone tool. I did find that to come in handy where it has the little point on it. So once I get them on there, if it's not perfect or there's like an indent on the edge that's sticking up, you can kind of take your little silicone tool and just make that flat or any places that you wanna open up more or close in more. I found that silicone tool to be pretty helpful with doing that versus like my finger or a popsicle stick or whatever that silicone tool doesn't stick to it and it seems to smooth out the epoxy sculpt like if there's a little place in there that gets a little indent or something and sometimes when you do this y'all it'll break off in little pieces you can see like it's just kind of a process here so if i wouldn't have really wanted to do this cup and and, and patience like there's a lot of time that went in here but it was so worth it to me because I wanted it to look like fondant. And so like an icing. So I knew that I could, I could probably mimic that with this, especially once I got it mixed and I could see the consistency of it. So you just kind of got to go in there and just let it go with the flow, y'all. If I can do this, I promise you, you can do it. Um, and just play around with it. And look, you don't see a lot of this, but there's a lot of me putting it on there and taking it off and putting it on there and taking it off. You guys would have been here for way too long watching this tutorial if y'all would have seen me do all that, but you kind of get the feeling here of what I do. I mean, I basically just try to make it flow and wrap around and look like this fun skirt that she had on in the cake. Had they done it? I just wanted it to look like that. And it was really not that hard to do. It's just a little time consuming because you have to do it a little bit at a time. So while you guys are watching me kind of do this process, I will go ahead and take a chance to tell y'all why I didn't color the culture sculpt before I did it. You definitely can color this before. I almost took some of the red dispersion colors and added a little bit to it to color it, but I knew that I was gonna have to do it in such small amounts. So it wasn't like I was gonna mix up one and then just put it on the cup. I was gonna be mixing it just continuously. And I thought, I don't want it to be different colors. I want the dress to be the, all to be the same color. So I just decided to paint it at the end versus coloring it at the beginning. But you definitely can color this before you apply it to the cup. So once you mix it together, you can put a little dispersion color in there. You can color it on the front end. I just knew that there was gonna be so many little, you know, so many little mixes here that I didn't want them to be all different colors or even different shades of the red. I wanted it to be pretty consistent. So that's why I decided not to color it on the front end to go back in and paint it. And then once I got it on there, I was kind of glad that I didn't, just because I could see this cup being uh, like a wedding dress almost before you put the red on it. So I basically just go in with, this is a deco art that I got at Hobby Lobby. It's in lipstick. And I just go in with a paintbrush and I just start dabbing. And this is another area that I'm not gonna lie to y'all, it took me longer than I expected it to. And because there were so many little nooks and crannies inside there once it dried, and I just let it dry overnight. So once I got the whole cup done, it dried overnight, and then I was gonna paint it the next day. Um, and I end up like using kind of a paintbrush that has pretty uh, stiff bristles on it, so it would get down in all those little areas. 
and then I end up going back and I bought these little micro brushes and I think they're used for like painting um, you know like model airplanes and like smaller things like that where you'd want a lot of detail so they ended up like you can see here and they're made by Rust-Oleum but they're little brushes and they ended up working really well to go back around the edges that were up against the cup and then just to get into all those little areas so you can see that it's painted here but there's still little areas down in there that I missed. So I go back and touch all that up and all I did that was the acrylic paint. And then you can see there were some areas that paint had gotten on the cup. So I just go in with a paper towel and some rubbing alcohol and I'm just gonna go right up against the edge and try to get any of those little places where I had gotten paint on the white part of the cup that I didn't want. And then I actually go in with an angled paintbrush, an angled flat paintbrush here, and I dip it in the rubbing alcohol and then little any little areas that are down in there that I couldn't get up with a paper towel, I just wipe that red paint up with the, you know, like the little angled paintbrush that I'm using here. And then after I get that up, I'm just gonna go in and all these little areas, you can just get right up in there with the alcohol. Then I just wipe my paintbrush off. And I just kinda go around there and do that until it's all up. And then there are some areas that I got poxy sculpt on the cup, or culture sculpt, I'm sorry. And so I go back in with my sanding paper, sanding paper here, yeah. And so just because I could get in there better with the paper than I can my sanding blocks. And so, I'm just going to go around in any little areas where I've gotten the culture sculpt on the cup or it doesn't look as shiny or there were areas that I needed the paint off of it. I just use my sanding paper here to get that off. And then I needed to, to paint the top of her dress. So I'm going to go in here with Countercultures Prime Time and I'm just going to prime it white so I have a base to paint the red over so it stands out more than trying to paint it over the black area. And here I'm really just trying to mimic the the girl that was on the cake. She kind of has this strapless dress on. And so I'm just going to work my way around the acrylic blank upon the prime time, just in the area that would look like she has a strapless dress on. And then once I get the prime time covered, I'm going to go back in with my same red lipstick deco art acrylic paint, and I'm going to paint over that. So here I'm just going back in with my same paint. I'm just taking that little paintbrush that I'd used before and I'm just going to paint right over the white where I placed the prime time. And then after that paint's dry, it only took about 30 minutes, I'm gonna go in with a layer of Countercultures Medium Viscosity Artist Resin. I mixed up too much here. Um, I wasn't sure how much the dress was gonna take, if it was gonna take more or less, so I kind of over mixed on this coat here. Um, I mixed up about 45 milliliters. It would have only taken the normal 30 and maybe not even that much because I didn't want the epoxy to sit on top of the dress. I just wanted it to coat all the areas where I put the epoxy sculpt. Um, so I apply it to the white and then I, I kind of just overlay it on here and then I do put a layer over her because I've painted the dress red. So I kind of add a little bit to the top of the acrylic blank where the girl's kind of standing there. And then I, you'll see me go take a paintbrush, a stiff, just like it's a cheap paintbrush and y'all buy those by like the dozens. Because I didn't want the epoxy to stand on top of the dress. I still wanted you to kind of have all the little ebbs and flows in the dress, just like you did before I applied the epoxy. I basically just wanted it to coat it. So you can see here, I'm just going back in and I'm just kind of pulling out any areas that it looks like the epoxy is gonna pull. That is not what I wanted. I just wanted it to be kind of a shiny coat on top of it. And I did add Peachy Olive Glitters Bright just to give it a little bit of sparkle and I just added a little bit, not very much. So, and then we're done with the cup. So I hope that you guys enjoyed this. Trust me, if I can do this, you can do this. 
and it just showed me that when I have something in my mind that I want to recreate, you just got to go for it. So this was one of those things I had no idea how it was going to turn out, but I was so glad that I did. It turned out just like I wanted it to. So if you guys have any questions, please let me know. I'm here to help y'all. Please like, share, comment, subscribe, all that fun, crazy stuff. Join our Facebook group, Dixie Darlings Tumblers, and make sure you share our creations with us, please. I love to see what you guys come up with. Thank y'all so much for watching, and I'll see y'all again soon.